Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah Nahmaduhu Wa nasta'inuhu Wa nasta'afiruhu Wa nu'minu bihi Wa natawakilu alayhi Wa na'udu billahi Min shururi anfusina Wa min sayyati A'malina Ma yahdihillahu Fala mazillala Wa ma yudlilhu Fala hadiyala Wa nashhadu an la ilaha illa Allahu wahdahu la sharika la Wa nashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh Allahumma rabbi shrahli sadri Wa yassirli amri Wa ahlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli Allahumma rabbana Atina min ladunka rahmatan wa hayi' lana min amrina rashada Allahumma rabbi yassir wa la tu'asir wa tammim bil khair Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma'allamtana innaka antal alimul hakim Sadaqallah سرق الله العلي العظيم وسرق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين أما بعد الحمد لله الحمد لله all praises and thanks are due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى for blessing us to be here today to perform the salat al jumaa and to listen to the khutbah we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his peace and blessings upon the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'een. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his rahmah, his mercy upon each and every one of us, to shower his hidayah, his guidance upon us, to shower his forgiveness upon us, and to shower his acceptance upon us. <clears throat> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our coming here today. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our salah, our dua, and all our amal and deeds fi sabilillah in the path of Allah. I once more ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his rahmah, his mercy upon me by giving me the permission and the uh, ability to fulfill this responsibility in delivering the khutbah. I seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. I seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's guidance. I seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness. I seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's assistance. And I seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's acceptance. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower unto me the quality of tawakkal ala Allah, the trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the taqwa, the piety, the iman, the faith, the hikmah, the wisdom, the ilm, the knowledge, and once more the ability to fulfill this responsibility in delivering the sermon or the khutbah. I put my tawakkal, I put my trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most sufficient My brothers and sisters Today inshallah With the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We want to remind ourselves After, after the salah after the Salah today, we have a janazah. So it's only appropriate that I remind myself and I remind you and all our viewers worldwide on Al Hikmat TV, uh, YouTube, and Facebook, etc. I want to remind myself and remind you a little bit about death because that is the reality. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, and I always remind myself, and I always remind you of that, وَذَكِّرْ فَإِنَّ ذِكْرَ 
return for all mu'mineen, remind and by reminding the believers benefit. So reminding ourselves about death, I know we hear that topic all the time and sometimes people are like, why? Why we need to just probe into that? The reality, my brothers and sisters, is whether we ponder over death or we don't ponder over death. Death will remain in front of us. You know, that's like, like one of us in the forest. We're going hunting or something, yeah? We're going hunting in the forest and a lion appears in front of us. Big bad lion. Do you think by us closing our eyes, bending our heads, closing our eyes, does that mean the lion is not there? If we are not seeing the lion, it does not mean the lion is not seeing us. And if we are not seeing the lion, it does not mean that the lion is not in front of us. So if we don't see signs of death, and we don't feel signs of death through the lines of sickness, etc., that does not mean that death is not in front of us. Sickness may be a sign of death, but sickness is not the sign of death. There are a lot of people who have had many kinds of sicknesses in their lives, and they survived it, and they never died. They never died from the sickness. We had just two days ago, actually the same day, around the same hour when we got the news that this sister passed away, uh, Sister Sabiha Jalil, right? I've got the name, the mother, some of our brothers here. Within that very same hour, we got the news that one of our, one, actually it's one of my teachers who taught me 45 years ago, one of his sons, who was only in his 40s. He came here. He was a visitor here. He spent some time with us. He went to sleep and never got up. <laughs> no sickness. This just happened two days ago. One of our brothers here spoke to him to the, uh, a day or two before that. He just went to sleep and never got up. So sickness is not a sign of death. Sickness can be a sign of death, but it is not. Many things can be a sign of death. Even living is a sign of death. Do you know that? The mere fact that we are alive, we have to die. Interesting. A uh, couple months ago, I really don't remember. Uh, Allah forgive me for <laughs> remembering the details of it, but someone called me and told me about a brother, or it's their relative. He had, um, he had a heart attack. Major heart attack. Ended up in a hospital for a couple of weeks. Got better, came home, had a major heart surgery. Got better, came home, all fine, all nice. Decided to go for a drive. He was all better. Went down the road, and someone ran into him and killed him. He didn't die by the, by the, the, the heart attack. He died by an accident. So, like the lion, even if we close our eyes and we don't think about death, that does not mean that death is not in front of us. There is no age for death. There is no age for death. There is no stage for death. No status for death. Death can come to a baby, to a 90 years old person, to a 20 years young person, any age, any time, any place. Very interesting. That's why, that's why, as Muslims, we were taught by the Prophet, peace be upon him, who taught us the Quran, and we were taught in the Quran about death all the time. 
Hence, we got to always be conscious of the reality of death. And what is being conscious of the reality of that means? Huh? What does that mean? That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran in, uh, in Surah Al Imran, Surah Al Imran, Al Imran, chapter 3, verse 185. Chapter 3, 185. Wow, a regular verse, well known verse. Kullu nafsin dha'iqatul maut. That every person shall have to taste death. We hear this all the time. So, you know, that brings me <laughs> to another example. And, and we could understand the reality of this, my brothers and sisters. We got it. It is very unfortunate that sometimes people say, well, when that time comes, we will see what happens. Uh, death is not something like that. Death is not just like crossing a bridge. When we reach the bridge, we'll cross it. You know, proverbs and wise sayings are good for its place and its time. But it does not necessarily apply to everything. When we reach the bridge, we'll cross it. That's something else. When it comes to death, it ain't about when we reach death, we'll cross it. Death is something we got to be prepared for. There's a little difference with that. That's not just a bridge. That's a bridge that we got to prepare to cross. Got to have a different kind of vehicle with different turbo engine things, some high level bridge that you got to put in first gear and go up or go down. You know, that reminds me of uh, the, the incident about a father who once asked a son, he said, the father told the son, he said, do you realize and do you remember that you got exams tomorrow? The son said, yes, dad, I know tomorrow I got my exams. Said, no need to remind me, I know I got exams tomorrow. The dad said, you know, I'm not reminding you that you got exams tomorrow. I'm sure you know you got exams tomorrow. What I'm reminding you about is have you prepared for your exams? So we all know we got death tomorrow. We all know that death is in front of us. But have we prepared for this journey of death and what takes place in the grave and what goes on afterwards? Are we prepared for that, those consequences? That's what the question is. That's what the dad is asking the son. Now, preparation does not just mean... Well, son, you got an examination. Yeah, you bought your spot. Yeah, I bought my spot. You set up with Fred Hunter's everything or the cemetery. Yeah, I did that. I already have people lined up to do everything. I got my clothing to be buried in. I got a mom already online. I got everything. Well, listen, that is not preparation for death. You know why? Because when we will die, where we will die, how we will die, we don't even know. So you can prepare a spot down the street here in Fred Hunter's, and we may just die in Saudi Arabia in Hajj. Or we may just be somewhere somehow, back in some other country. So the preparation of the spot and the home, and the, that is not necessarily the preparation. Or it is a good preparation, it may be part of the preparation, but it's not the purpose of the preparation because that will happen anyhow. One thing for sure you know, when we die, everybody will get rid of us. See? If they have to find a spot, they will bury us. If they have to take somebody else's spot and put us in. The most loving wife will say, how do we get rid of him quickly? The most loving husband will say, how do we get rid of her quickly? Well, I'm just using the word rid. How could we bury her as fast as possible? Suddenly, everybody become Islamic. And we're supposed to bury quick. And we're supposed to bury quick. See? Everybody wants to get rid of us quickly. So the preparation of the spot and the funeral home and the imam and whoever to live, that is basic. Good. Not necessary. Good. Not necessary. Because remember, even if the government has to bury us, the state will bury us. All right? When you come to America, you have to get a visa to come. If you die in America, you don't need a visa to be buried in the hole. They will find a way to bury you for free. 
No visa to go down there. Everybody will do it. Even though you got millions of people in Hajj in Saudi Arabia, when uh, people die, they find place to bury them. It's not about we overpopulated. No, 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 no. So the preparation is not necessarily the pen and the paper and the iPad and the computer and the laptop for the exams tomorrow for a student. The preparation is what good deeds have we done that will make our journey after we close our eyes easy for us. That's the preparation. That brother is that. I know a lot of people say, well, I already bought my spotted Fred Hunter. Like, oh, everything's set. That's not, <laughs> that's not it, man. You know, I stuck for a lot. Other people think like that. Probably don't believe that there is a journey after the body dies. The journey of the soul after. We believe that. The Quran tells us that. The Sunnah tells us that. So in the second khutbah, I want to remind myself and you a little bit of some of the things we can do to prepare ourselves for that journey. Uh, anyhow, before we get to the second khutbah, let me remind myself and you of an incident in the um, time of Hazrat Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He was the third khalifa, the third khalifa. So one day he went by the grave, and he would always do that, not just one day. He will always do that. Narrations and a hadith tells us about it. He will always go to the grave, go to the cemetery and visit. And when he would go to the graves and the cemetery, he would cry and he would cry and he would cry. And the narrators say that he would cry so much that his beard will be soaked in tears. And he would be asked, but why are you crying so much? You have heard about the punishment in hell, and you don't cry so much when you hear about the punishment in hell. Oh, Hazrat Umar, Hazrat Uthman radiallahu ta'ala, no, why do you cry so much when you go to the grave? He said to the questioners who always ask him that, he said, I have heard my Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, that the grave is the first stage in the journey after death. The grave is what? The first stage, you know, the first stop. Like if you have a flight from here to somewhere else, Japan or somewhere, Saudi Arabia for Hajj, many a times you don't take direct flights from here unless you go into Saudi Airlines, you go direct to Saudi Arabia or some other airlines, exceptional but you will have a little stop in some other country before. In transit, uh, yeah, in, in the case of flying to Hajj, the first stop in that journey. So Hadith Uthman radiallahu ta'ala who would always answer and say, the grave is the first stop or stage in the journey after the body dies. And he says that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and if the consequences and the situation in the grave is okay for that person, then the entire journey will be easy and easier. If the grave consequences, which is a whole different lecture. He says, but if the grave, in the grave, things are bad, then be prepared that journey will be worse as that person continues after. That's why he cries when he goes to the grave. That's why we are taught, my brothers and sisters, to always go to the cemetery, at least once a week if we can, visit the graveyard, think about death, just so that we may think about death. Or maybe we may see a loved one, or we may see someone may not be our loved one, someone very high-key, very high polluted, very high-tech, very, <laughs> very bad in this world, if I want to put it. Lived a very big, pompous life. Boasted of all that they have, and what they have, and where they have been, and what they have been. 
to know that they are right now just six feet down. See the condition of that person. That can bring something to our minds to say, let us not be like that. Let us not be like that. Because it doesn't take us very far. It takes us right there. Last week I mentioned, somehow we were talking about a different topic. Doesn't matter what we have. Each one of us may have different things, different possessions and positions and whatever we may be in the world. And think of who we are wherever we may be, at the end of the day, and even when we live here on earth, we may live in different levels, but very interesting, when we die, we go into one level. Yeah, one level. That size. They don't say he was a big man, boy, we're going to give him deep, give him a big grave, 20 feet, 100 feet wide. You don't do that. As big as he may be, as powerful as he may be, as wealthy as he may be, doesn't make it. Same size, same level, same place. You know, the more we remind ourselves of this, is the more it's, it's important that we ponder on this topic. Again, it's not about the death, it's about preparation for that time. Remember, it is power, wealth, and status does not necessarily mean success in this world. That's a temporary success. If power, if wealth, if that meant success in this world, have you heard about a man called Pharaoh? You guys have heard about him? Yeah, those of you who read the Quran, you would have heard about him. In the Bible, he's called Pharaoh. Have you seen the movie, The Ten Commandments? Have you read the life or seen the movies on the life of Moses? Peace be upon him. You would have come across that man called Pharaoh. He had it all. Money, power, wealth, status. He had so much that he thought that he was God. Some commentators of the Quran say is that it is reported that he never had a headache for more than 400 years. So when Moses, peace be upon him, went to preach to him, he said, what are you telling me? I don't need your God. I don't need a God. I am bigger and greater than that. I have everything, power, money, status, wealth. Yeah. Go check it out. It's not just a Quranic lesson. It's in the Bible, the Torah, the Psalms. And even though he had the most in power, wealth, and status, he was the worst failure and is the worst failure that ever walked on earth. Go check his lifestyle. It is said that even the earth has refused his body. Even the earth refused his body. I get a little goosebumps when I hear that. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Bible, in the Torah, in the Psalms, in the Quran, the lesson of Pharaoh. This is not just a, 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 a you and I Muslim story. This is a lesson for Christians, Jews, and the world. Not only was he that who he think he was, he is considered the worst failure in the world. Because he thought he had it all and never prepared for death. So he did not do the righteous deeds that was necessary to prepare for death. And he, if he had listened to what Moses, peace be upon him, had to say, he would have worshipped the God whom he would have to face after death. Anyhow, let's go on the second khutbah, otherwise I won't stop. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. <clears throat> may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us Jannah or Paradise without reckoning. Wa akhri da'wan alhamdulillahi rabbil alam.
Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa la aqibati lal muttaqeen Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulihi Wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'in Once more we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala For blessing us to be here today To perform the Salat al-Jum'ah And to listen to the khutbah We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala To shower his peace and blessings Upon the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'in We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala To shower upon each and every one of us His mercy, his guidance, his forgiveness and his acceptance And I again ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala To shower his rahmah, his mercy upon me By giving me the permission and the ability To continue with the second khutbah inshallah I seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy, I seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's guidance, I seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness, I seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's assistance, I seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's acceptance. I again ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show unto me the quality of tawakkal ala Allah, the trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the taqwa, the piety, the iman, the faith, the hikmah, the wisdom, the ilm, the knowledge. And again, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless me with the ability to continue with the second khutbah, inshallah. I put my tawakkal, I put my trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most sufficient. So to continue on this topic of death, my brothers and sisters. Very interesting, as we started the khutbah, most of you were not here. Very interesting to repeat as we continue in the second khutbah. Just so those of you are here, even though we may think that we don't see the signs of death, it does not mean that death is not in front of us. Death has no age. And I shared a little while ago the, the, the example of a lion and a person, if you or I would have been in a jungle to cut it short, and a lion appears on us, closing our eyes, like an ostrich. You know how an ostrich operates? An ostrich puts its head down in the sand, as though it's out of the world, but the whole world is around it. So if the lion is in front of us and we close our eyes, that does not mean we are not seeing the lion. The lion is not there. The lion is there. We may not see death. Oh, I'm young, I'm strong, boy, I got everything. I can buy the doctors. I can buy the hospital. <laughs> Even the guys who own the hospitals, private hospitals, they die. They die. I had a, uh, uh, so one of our Islamic scholars was saying that his dad um, used to, was an army person in the Navy, something. And one doctor came to tell them about the heart and how they must keep their health going and how they must keep themselves healthy in the army and what they, was, what they should do. And he had a whole big sophisticated operation, this doctor, sophisticated doctor, explaining them about their heart and heart attacks and what you must do to prevent it. And while he was doing that, he got a heart attack and died. Then you have many doctors who tell you, don't do this and do that, otherwise you'll die. And listen, you're still living and they're dead. Oh, sir, I know we have a doctor here, but doesn't that happen? <laughs> the doctor's gone. They tell you what to do and what not to do, so you won't die. <laughs> but they die before you. Why? Because nobody knows when they will die. Young, healthy, wealthy or not. So by us shutting our eyes away and not thinking about it and not pondering over it, like the person in the jungle and the lion is in front, ready to grab them. Death is always there. We, that's how we got to think of death. No, it doesn't mean that we must not act. We got to live. We got to eat. We got to drink. We got to get married. We got to work. We got to have a career. We got to live a normal life. But be prepared for death. See, that's the technicality. It is interest, interesting. How everybody you talk to nowadays, they tell you, well, you know, I have my 401k. Is 401k you call it? 401k, many k's inside. 
we got this prepared for our children. I have so much money from properties that will come in when I get old, so I will retire. Oh, Sheikh, I'm building all these properties. You know, many times I meet friends. Oh, I just build this. I just build that. I just rented that. So when you see uh, later on in life, I'll sit back and just collect so I don't have to work again. And you know, my, my kids got this property and they got that already and they got all this. So if I die tomorrow, they have everything in place. Even my grandchildren and great-grandchildren got it. But you don't hear what they have prepared for after death. This person is telling you everything that they have prepared in this world for themselves. When they get old, when they get sick, when their children come along, their grandchildren come along, but they don't hear, um, did you build a castle in paradise, brother? If you were to ask them that, they would feel very insulted, eh? very abused and very hurt. The real journey, the real destination that they are heading, they haven't built anything for that. <laughs> they have built what, that, what they will not benefit from. How do you even know you will get sick? And you will need what you put aside for sickness. Ah, we may just die before that. But nobody says don't prepare. Yeah, prepare. We got to be smart, intelligent people. Prepare. But also prepare for the real journey after death. Nobody says don't prepare. No, that's the point we miss. So you talk, you talk to some of your friends. You go back in some of your home, especially when you go home, people talk all about, even here, people have come to America and have made this and have made that. And what have you made for the year after? Uh, how many trees have you planted in, your, in the garden of Jannah? Mm -hmm. You know, Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, uh, the son-in-law of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. he was once on a journey once on a journey with Hazrat Kumail radiallahu ta'ala, who was a sahaba by the name of Kumail. And they stopped off by the graveyard. Many graves were. And he went, Salaamu Alaikum, Ya Ahlul Kubur. Salaamu Alaikum, O dwellers of the graves. And he said, so how is life down there? How is life? What's going on? So... He turned to his to Hazrat Kumail radiallahu ta'ala and he said, Kumail, they can't answer me. Because they've passed away, they can't talk. He said, but before he told him that, he said to the people in the cemetery, he said, Well, I will tell you how life is up here. Since you passed away, your children have become orphans. Your wives have remarried. Your property has been distributed. <laughs> the property you died for 27, for, for, what do you call it? 724, 24-7. See, all that has been distributed. That's what I could tell you going on up here. Then he told Hazrat Kumail, radiallahu ta'ala, who was with him, he said, if they could have spoken, do you know what they would have told me? They would have said that after death we realized that the grave is a container of amal. The grave is what? A container of amal, meaning deeds. That it is only our good deeds on this earth that benefits us there. It's only the good deeds that we did in this world will benefit us there, there in the grave. Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala and who told Hazrat Kumail that, that if they could have spoken, that's what they would have said. Taqwa. If we would have done our duty to Allah as we were supposed to do our duty to Allah while we are alive in the world, that would have benefited us more here. But we spend our time and our possessions and everything and other things else. Sad, eh? That's why the Prophet wasallam tells us, my brothers and sisters, he says, when a person, <clears throat> when a person passes away and the person is taken to the grave, three things follow him. You hear this all the time. I'm only reminding myself and reminding you. It's just a reminder. Again, for those of you who have just came, 
We have a janazah after Salah. So I'm reminding myself and you, reminding myself and you a little bit about death. Because it's a janazah. You know, if we go to a nikah ceremony, we'll talk about marriage. If it's Eid, we'll talk about Eid. So we got a janazah after. So we remind ourselves. That's why the Prophet Sallallahu says when a person passes away and the body is taken to the cemetery, the grave, three things accompany that person. The person's wealth, meaning whatever the person had in the world, if the person was a big boss in a company, well, all the workers will go. Yeah? Yeah, all the workers will go. That's his wealth. Whatever money he would have had would be spent to have whatever kind of funeral it is. He might have a lake view gra grave. You know, some people ask for lake view as though they will get up and see the, the, the water. <laughs> the wealth might be part of it. The family members will go. Friends, family will go with the person to the grave. Isn't that so? And the Prophet wasallam says, the third thing that goes with that person is the amal, the good deeds that the person did in this world. And when the person is buried, every th the two things come back. Whatever was the business, the job, the workers, the employees, the status, they leave. The family members leave. And only the amal and the good deeds that that person did in this world will remain with that person there in the grave, which is why we say it's a container of amal and good deeds. That's why we need to plan those deeds now. That's why we need to do those deeds now. Death can be any time. Don't wait for 80 years. The, the mother that passed away two days ago, she lived for 88 years. I think she was just one month away from 89. You and I may not be lucky to live for that. You and I may not have the bonus, the, the, that, those extra years as a bonus. Huh? Not everybody are fortunate to have that. Mm -hmm. We don't know whatever age we may be young, strong, we got to do whatever is necessary for that journey after we close our eyes. So after Allah takes our soul, we don't close our eyes really, you know. It's Allah sends the angel to take our soul and then this body, this body closes automatically. I felt like the angel was going to take my soul there, but I almost flipped. Anyhow. So, doesn't matter who we are. Doesn't matter where we are. Hear what Allah says in this verse in the Quran. I want to remind myself and you of this verse, Surah Nisa, chapter 4. Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse 78. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Aina ma takunu yudrikkumul maut. Wherever you may be, wherever we may be, death will find us. That angel of death, you can be in a sealed glass case. We can be in the tallest building. You can be in one of Trump Towers. You can be in one of the towers in Dubai. Or one of the towers in Saudi Arabia. Some of the tallest towers in the world. The angel of death will find us. That's what Allah is telling us here. Allah is telling us, Law kuntum fi buruj mushayyada. Doesn't matter how powerful and sophisticated the building or the towers that we may be in could be secured. Angel of death will find us. Chapter 4, verse 78. Brothers and sisters, we need to go home and ponder on these verses. So some of us in our little gated community here, where even thieves get in, in in America, <laughs> little sophisticated gated com com communities, we think, well, relatives and friends can't find us. Thieves find us. That's why you still have alarm system. Yeah? <laughs> so you don't think angel of death will find us? In these little <laughs> two-by-two -two security system we think we have here? So we got to be prepared, my brothers and sisters. And I'll conclude the khutbah, inshallah, with a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us 
that there are seven things, you know, I've been talking about, reminding myself when you have good deeds. So you know what to do, good deeds. I don't need, I'm not here to tell you about good deeds. That's a whole living lecture. I'm just reminding myself and you and our viewers worldwide and our my TV and Facebook, YouTube, etc. We must prepare for the death. We all know it's there, like an examination tomorrow. The pencil, the iPad, and the laptop is not necessarily the preparation. The knowledge to answer the questions in the examination tomorrow, that's the preparation. The knowledge that we have earned and what we have done that will benefit us in that exam, that will give us credit. You know, sometimes, listen to the American system, and I love that, I love it. That's why America is a powerful country. Um, Sometimes you go for an examination and they give you 20 questions, so you've got to prepare for that, right? So that's the preparation. But then again, sometimes in America you do certain community services. And do you know that goes as credit in your exams? That goes as credit that will give you a better success in your exam. They add those credits. They look at the credits that helps you in your literal verbal question and answer or written examination. So similarly, prepare with the Quran and Sunnah for the questions and do community services which goes as credit. Credit, all colleges, universities use it. Credit, we sign here in Al-Hikmat and Dar al for students who need credit. They come and they volunteer, do good community services, come help us stick Quran, they come to help us do this, they come in the office, they come next door in Al-Hikmat, they give us 24, 30, 40, 50, 60 hours, good credit, and they're off the mark. And even if they have a better record, you know, do you know that's how it works, eh? I'm sure most of you know that. If they got a ticket, or the broad sheriff got hold of them, and now they got bad credit. They come to the mosque, they come to Al-Hikmat, we give them extra hours, it clears their credit. How you like that? That happens in American system. Don't you think that happens in Islamic system? Yes, it happens. When Allah sees that we do community service, and we do khidmat, and service for the community, it adds to our credit, which makes the journey after very easy. When we are very charitable and kind people in this world, the Prophet ﷺ says that the, the charitable deeds that we have done in this world will be a shade for us on the Day of Judgment. How many of us think about that journey, that time, which is the final and the real destination? So to conclude the khutbah, the Prophet ﷺ says there are a couple things that he encouraged us to do while we are alive that will be ch considered as charitable deeds. And when we die, those deeds, blessings will also continue. You see, it's like you plant a seed, and when we die, it also continues. Yeah, the Prophet wasallam, he told us about knowledge that you teach someone. Knowledge that you teach someone. When you die, the knowledge of the Quran, the Sunnah, the good deeds that that person do or does and the person live by, that blessings after we die will continue for us in our account. Just keep on going on. The more Quran, the more Salah, the more the person, that person does after we pass away that we taught, account will be booming. That's why we are having this Katam Quran this Sunday here. Al Hikmat is organized just for our viewers worldwide. It's going to be live on Al Hikmat TV, YouTube, and Facebook. And those of you who are here and you are alive, those of you who are alive, you come. Yeah. <laughs> those who are alive. Yeah, come. The topic is going to be our death, it's going to be about the grave, it's going to be about the journey of the soul. I couldn't cover all that today. Time does not permit. It's going to be 4 30. On Sunday, all are invited, and we want to invite you to invite all your family and friends. If you remind, if you bring one person to come to listen and they change their life, you will get blessings. That will be a knowledge you have passed on because you are the means for that person. Do you follow that? So we have Sheikh Roshan, Sheikh Zakaria, Sheikh Azhar, uh, Sheikh Sultan, Azhar from Mominin in Coral Spring, uh, Sheikh Sultan from IFSF. Sheikh Roshan, Sheikh Zakaria, they're going to all be coming and talking about death and soul and the grave. If you come and you bring someone and you invite your family and friends as a righteous person, the people that learn from that, you would have been the means of them learning something Sunday. 
You would have been the means of them being reminded of something. You would have been the means of them changing their lives and preparing for death. So every good deed that they do after Sunday, you will get the blessings when you die and even now. Now, now, and when you die, that person continues to do good deeds for what they learn. What they learn, you continue to get blessings, which is Sadkajariya. So don't just come alone. Bring friends and relatives. That's what Islam is all about. Dawah, invite people. Yeah. The knowledge that a person teaches someone. The Prophet ﷺ speaks about a well. If you dig a well and people can benefit from water now while you're alive, don't wait to die. And then we die, the blessings continue. Maybe one of these days I'm going to try to talk to the city of Penrith Pines and dig a well in front of Darul, inshallah. That's just a joke. Don't take me serious. Instead of people drink water, they may jump inside to swim. They may think it's a swimming pool. Prophet says, some dig a well that will help people. That's why we are in Al Hikmat, we're in a project. We do that for people right now. People contact us and we talk to people in Africa and villages that need water and we get donations and we send it there and do a well in the name of this one, the name of that one. I'm just getting the blessings, you getting the blessings, and we all get the blessings. That's a hadith. Seven things before we die we could, should invest in. That will be. We get blessings now, and when we die, the blessings continue. The Prophet also said, three, or make a stream run in water. You know, in the long time Western days, the horse riders used to drink from that. Animals can drink from it. Gardens can benefit. Crops can benefit. Prophet speaks about planting a tree. You plant a tree now, a nice mango tree. It's mango season now. And you sh don't do like some people. Eh? They've got the most sophisticated mango trees in their yard. And when the mangoes bear, they hide it. By the time they're ready to eat it, it's rotten. So they don't eat it, and nobody else they get to eat it. Don't do that. Share it if you can't eat it. I love mangoes. <laughs> That's an indirect way of asking. But good mangoes, they eh? don't bring no kind of rotten fall down mangoes. That's stuck for a lot. Come on, do something good. <laughs> Share your mangoes. You got a tree, you plant a date tree, a coconut tree, a pot, whatever. Share it. You eat, but share it. Don't hide it. The Prophet says, everyone that eats from that, you benefit while you're alive. When we die, everyone that benefits from it, we get their blessings. See? Continuous blessings. Those are some of the deeds we're talking about in the first khutbah and all what good deeds we can do that when we die, that's preparation. That's investment. That's investment. All the other properties and things we buy, that's investment for other people that we leave behind. The land and the properties and the, well, that's what we leave behind. These things that we're talking about in hadith, that's what we plan that we will meet ahead. The, the hadith says, if we die with a billion blessings, on the day of judgment, we may see trillions of blessings. And we wonder about where these blessings came from. It's the tree that you planted someone ate from. Yeah. The knowledge that you taught someone, people benefiting and praying and doing good deeds, that accumulates in our account. The water that people drink from, the well, the stream, the animal that drinks from that tree. You build a masjid. Prophet speaks of building a masjid. Five. Build a school, build a dawah center, build something that people can learn. So while we're alive, we get the blessings, and when we die, it continues. The Prophet says the person who gives a, a Quran, a Quran to someone, the blessings of the knowledge of a Quran. In those days, they used to write it on leaves and, and little pieces of bark of trees, etc. That's why nowadays Al Hikmat has that 100,000 copies a year that we made that intention to give, give away every year. We, you do it, you do it, now you get blessings. When you die, everyone that reads from that Quran and benefits, the blessings continue and continue and continue. That's why we made that a, a project of Al Hikmat, major project of Al Hikmat Dawah services. If you want to know more about it, check the Al Hikmat tables when you leave and you'll see a Quran form that says, Sadqa Jariya for your deceased ones. You do 10 Quran, 100 Quran, 50 Quran. You don't know who can read it. You know, we got some letters this week from the prisons. People were so happy, so happy 
They got Qurans, they got Dawah materials in Ramadan. You don't know their lives have changed because people change quickly in prison because they see a kind of hell there. That's hell, you know. <laughs> Jail is a kind of hell for some people. So reality comes to the brain and the mind. And they study the Quran and they change their lives. All the good deeds they would do after, get married, the children, their families, we will get the blessing, those who have done those Quran and send it to the prisons and send it to all over the world. So the Prophet Sallallahu amongst these seven things, the sixth, he said, Quran especially. One is good knowledge that you share. The first thing we talk about, Quran, Sunnah, El. But the Quran knowledge that we share to people in itself is, is sarqa for us while we are alive, jariya when we die, continuous. And last thing he said in these seven things, a righteous child. That when you make your children righteous, yes, give them degrees, give them diplomas, give them all the degrees. But make them religious, God conscious, that they will do good deeds. That when we die, every good deed that they do, every good dua that they make, every good amal and good deed that they do, you will get their blessings. While you're alive, you're getting the blessings for, for planting in them this good, this good characteristic. And when we die, it becomes jariah. And that's why again this Sunday coming, we got a couple of families who are coming together, inviting their friends and their families. Everybody, and we're inviting you. I'm officially inviting all of you here. Please come. Remember about death. Please, don't wait to see someone die to remember death. Death is, death is standing in front of us. That's why we have this program again on Sunday, so that people... People could be reminded. Families could come and make du'a for their loved one together. I just want to get a blessing. The more people come together and make du'a and listen and learn, they get blessings and their parents who brought them up will get blessings. So don't forget that. Again, for those of you who came late, we have a janazah after salah. So is the body here already? Okay. So I'll conclude right here now, inshallah. So I wanted to remind myself and you about death because we got a janazah. And I thought that's the best thing to do, remind myself, remind all of you about death. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Ya Allah, ya rahman rahmin. Alhamdulillah. Ya Allah. Alhamdulillah. We thank thee, Allah, for all the favors and bounties that you have bestowed upon us, ya Allah. And we ask thee, Allah, to shower your peace and blessings upon the Holy Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask the Allah to give us all the good in this world and the good in the hereafter. Allahumma rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatan wa fil akhirati hasanatan wa qina azabanar bi rahmatika ya rahmah. Inna Allah wa malaikatuhu yusalluna ala nabi Ya yuhaladzina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli ala sayyidina maulana Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammadin bi'adadi man sallahu wa sallam Allahumma salli ala sayyidina maulana Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammadin bi'adadi man qa'da wa qam wa salli ala jamil anbiyai wal mursaleen wa ala kulli malaikatika al-muqarrabin wa ala ibadillahi salihin bi rahmatika ya rahman rahmin ibadullah inna Allah ya'amadu bil adli wal ihsan wa ita'i dhil qurba wa yanhani al-fahcha wal munkari wal bagh ya'idhukum la'allakum tadhakkaroon wa la dhikrullahi ta'ala a'la wa awla wa azza wa jalla wa hamma wa akbar Allahu akbar akim as-salam